I can see the title of this diagram is um, How Natural Selection Works. And there are lots of different symbols here, so I'm gonna make sure I read the key and understand what each of these symbols means. Um, these red dots symbolize um, the amount of TTX poison, and X symbolizes death, and these little lines that kind of look like a track uh, mean reproduction. So let me look at each panel here and um, see what I notice and what's going on. There are different inherited traits in the population. Okay, so this is my whole population of newts, and I have five newts with uh, one dot to symbolize a low amount of poison. I have five newts with kind of a medium amount of poison. They have three dots, and then I have uh, five newts with six dots to indicate a high poison level. In panel two, it says adaptive traits help organisms survive in their environment. Organisms with adaptive traits are more likely to survive long enough to reproduce. Okay, so I remember poison level is adaptive. So um, that definitely is demonstrated in what I'm seeing here. Those newts with a low poison level with only one dot, um, many of them have died, and even some of the newts with a medium poison level have died as well. And one newt with a high poison level has also died. However, those newts that still exist have been able to reproduce. So um, there's one newt with a low poison level that was able to reproduce. Um, two newts with a medium poison level that were able to reproduce, and then four out of the five with a high poison level were able to reproduce. So the organisms that reproduce pass on their traits to the next generation. So I can see here, this is now what my population might look like. These four newts have reproduced, and so now we have a larger number of newts with a higher poison level, and the medium newts have also reproduced, so then we have a larger number of newts with a medium poison level, and even the one with a low poison level has also reproduced, so there's still lots of variation in this population, but the distribution of poison level definitely is leaning towards those with high poison level, which totally makes sense because poison level is an adaptive trait that helps these newts survive and therefore reproduce. And um, so we can see that the survival of these newts allowed them the opportunity to reproduce, which we can see in the final panel here in this population um, that we end with. I want you to turn and talk to a friend or family member. Jot your responses down on a piece of paper um, with your pen and your notebook or lined paper. And I want you to explain in your own words, why are there more newts with high poison level in the population in diagram three, so these newts here, why are there a higher number of uh, newts with a high poison level in this diagram compared to the diagram one here where we only have this many newts with a high poison level? Turn and talk to your neighbor or a family member here pause the video and I want you to try and explain this in your own words. When we talk to someone and explain it in our own words, we are therefore able to um, uh, understand a little bit more about what's happening here. So pause the video now, talk with someone, and we'll come back in just a second to understand what we learned. All right, I hope you were able to explain in your own words to your friend or your family member that there were more newts in this population in diagram three than in this population in diagram one because those newts had the adaptive trait of high poison level that allowed them to survive longer and thus have the opportunity to reproduce more. So because these newts were able to survive, they were able to reproduce and therefore caused a higher number of newts with high poison level 
in the ending population. And what we can extract from this is this key concept. Grab your pen or pencil and your notebook or your line paper or your tracker, wherever you're keeping track of these key concepts. And we can extrapolate this from what we just saw in that diagram. Individuals with adaptive traits are more likely to live longer and have offspring. Individuals with non-adaptive traits are more likely to die without having offspring. We also saw that in our simulation from last lesson as well. Those organisms with adaptive traits, whether that be poison level or uh, the adaptive trait of uh, uh, australope color that match the environment, those organisms are able to live longer and then have offspring. And the individuals with non-adaptive traits, whether that be a low poison level or a australope color that does not match the environment, they're going to be eaten quicker and they're more likely then to die without having offspring. This information that we just gathered from our article, as well as from this diagram that we just analyzed together, will help us as we circle back to our chapter two question below. And that chapter two question was, how do individuals in a population get their traits? Pause the video right now, and I want you to turn to someone near you, talk to someone, you can text someone if you want, and respond to this question, now that we have the understandings that we have about natural selection and how individuals in a population get, get their traits. So pause the video and respond to this question, discuss it with someone so that um, we can further develop our understanding and our scientific skills of explanation. This is really exciting. We just got another message from Dr. Alex Young, who is a head biologist at Oregon State Park. Let's see what he has to tell us. I hope you're making progress in your investigation of the poison poisonous rough skin newts. We're hoping to share your explanation with park visitors as soon as possible. Can you explain what you know so far about the newt population? We would really appreciate if you could send over a scientific argument that connects your evidence to your claim and reasoning. That will really help our visitors understand more about the newts. So it seems like he wants us to create an explanation that these visitors can um, understand as they learn more about newts and the other organisms in the park. I'm sure you all remember how to write a scientific argument, but let's just do a little refresher. In a scientific argument, we always start with the question about the natural world. For us, that question is, how did the rough skin newt population become more poisonous over time? We then make a claim, which is a proposed answer to a question about the natural world. And then we support that claim with evidence. Evidence is information about the natural world that is used to support or go against or refute the claim. And we can use evidence, which comes from our articles and our reading, the simulations that we have done together, and anything else that you might want to incorporate into this argument that supports the claim that we have done or seen in this unit. We then use scientific reasoning, folks. We, we talk about those scientific principles that support our evidence and connect that evidence to the claim. The claim that we are going to make for this scientific argument is the following. The claim is the new population became more poisonous because the snakes in this environment cause poison to be an adaptive trait and poison level 10 is the most common because the newts with this trait were able to live longer and reproduce more than other newts. So I want to challenge you to write a scientific argument that responds to this question and supports this claim. You can even write your own version of this claim if you would like and support it with evidence and reasoning. 
You may want to share this with your teacher or a family member or a friend as well um, as you are sharpening those scientific argumentation skills. Grab a pen or pencil, grab some paper. You can also type this if you um, want to and challenge yourself by writing a scientific argument that helps us respond to this unit phenomena about how the rough skin newt population became more poisonous over time. Let's summarize what we learned in this lesson. Poison can serve as an adaptive trait if predators detect the poison before killing their prey. Organisms with adaptive traits are less likely to die than organisms with non-adaptive traits, which means that they have more opportunities to reproduce. And individuals with adaptive traits are more likely to live longer and have offspring. Individuals with non-adaptive traits are more likely to die without having offspring. Make sure you include some of these in your written scientific arguments. You might also want to include some of the key concepts, which are scientific principles that can serve as reasoning to connect your evidence with your claim. Thanks for joining me for Lesson 6 in our Natural Selection Unit.